Hi, thanks for watching. Today I'm going to show you how I do a butterfly and flower painting the easy way. I won't be trying to follow this reference photo exactly, it's just there for inspiration. To make this um, image easy, I only drew one flower and here's how I started off. I chose a green background so that I could actually see the petals and I painted one petal using the studio brush from the inking range and once I'd done one petal I then used the copy and paste facility to copy and paste the petal in various places till I had one complete flower and um, then I went filled in the center with a lighter color and then went around making small circles um, to see what it looked like. My first attempt wasn't very realistic, um, so I did another. Then once I'd got the one flower done on one layer, I duplicated the layer and moved that flower and then did the same thing again. Now you can see I'm duplicating flower layers all over the place. The thing to do when you doing this is so that you don't want them all to look the same so if you select a layer you can then use the transform tool or the warp tool to actually twist the petals into a different direction if you look at the three flowers on the top left hand side of the picture they're angled slightly differently um, because i want a butterfly sitting on top of those and you can see that it gives a better angle and a different angle to the others and yet all of these flowers are all done from one single flower. You may notice as well that on two groups of the flowers they look as if they're further back and that's because on those layers I reduced the opacity down to about 75% and it just makes the image have a little bit more depth. Another thing worth mentioning is that if you look at the centre of the flowers, although they've all been done from one single flower at the beginning, they are all different and that's because I used the burnt tree brush from the charcoal range to actually put some marks on the centres of all the flowers individually to make them all look like different flowers. Right, now it's time to put the stalks in and if you've seen any of my videos before you'll know that I use the same system to make a stalk look cylindrical. First, using the studio brush, I take a mid-tone green and draw in the stalk um, and any side stalks. Then I change the brush to the grunge brush from the textured range and set very small. I draw a lighter green line down the one side of the plant, whichever way the light's coming from. In this case, it's the left side and then once that's done, I take a darker tone of green that is darker than the mid-tone used for the main stalk and drag that down the right-hand side, all with the, texture, the grunge brush on a small setting. And this gives the stalk that cylindrical look. Don't worry if the grunge brush puts a little bit of extra paint down on the sides of the stalk and it looks a little bit messy if you've been doing these stalks all on kept them all on the separate layers you'll be able to use the erase tool to erase any extra color out and tidy the whole thing up you can see now that i've also started putting in some of the leaves this is done with the Jensinki brush from the inking range i use the Jensinki brush because it's got for this type of lip because it's got a sort of a roundish look to it and I use the same method with the, as I use with the stalks three tones of green d dark lighter and even lighter to give the leaves some sort of form although I did do one or two of these leaves individually the vast majority of them again are just copied and pasted and using the transform and warp tools to change the direction and the twist on the leaf to make them all look like individual leaves and then I put it onto a white background just to see what it looks like in a lighter colour. 
you can see now I'm putting in various um, bits of grass with various shades of green and you'll also notice that there's some little white flowers popping up here and there those are little daisies done with a stamp daisy stamp brush that I made myself um, I won't go into the details of how to make a stamp brush because there are plenty of um, tutorials on the internet about how to do stamp brushes but you can see that having one of those in your arsenal makes life um, quite simple to give a painting some extra depth. You can also use these daisies to give the painting some depth by making sure they're smaller at the back and larger at the front. Right, now it's time to do the butterfly. I uh, dropped the reference photo on the top and trace round the marks with a black fine tip pen from the inking range and then I open another layer on top of that. Now I do that to make it simpler for doing the colours on the butterfly. Um, I, I'm able by doing that to be able to put the colours in and then rub out the lines as I go and that way I don't lose where I am because if you're starting to put black paint on top of black lines you'll soon everything vanishes so by doing it on a separate having the line drawing on a separate layer you'll be able to keep those lay that drawing intact until you want to get rid of it and I usually just rub it out as I go so the um, the colors on the butterfly are done using the studio brush from the inking range in the first case to put in all the different colors and where they go and then once that is done I use the grunge brush from the texture range to give the colors some life and I use the same method as I do with the with the leaves and stalks really is a matter of you put in a mid-tone and then go a tone below it and a tone above it so that if you've got orange then you'll use a lighter orange and a darker orange and when you do that you'll get um, something that looks a little bit more realistic than if you just paint it in a flat orange colour. Doing a butterfly is a matter of trial and error really um, because you can that's the beauty of digital painting that you can try it and if it doesn't work you can erase it and do it again and again and again and eventually you'll get the look that you're after. The um, the bodywork of the butterfly by the way is done with a very fine um, brush from the inking range and, and it gives you, set very low, it gives you a very fine line. Because I've done the butterfly on a separate layer you'll just no have noticed that I was able to make the butterfly smaller and then placed exactly where I wanted on top of the flowers. Now it looks exactly like that. It is sitting on top of the flowers. So I've just made some more flowers and popped them on another layer in front of the butterfly, above the butterfly in terms of layers. And that makes it look as if the butterfly is in the painting, not on the painting. Right, time to do the second butterfly. There's again drop in the reference photo, trace round it and open another layer and then another one on underneath that one and do the painting on that. You'll notice I've only done half a butterfly and that's again is to make it easier and save time. we we'll just paint one side of the butterfly and then copy and paste it and flip it horizontally and lo and behold you've got a whole butterfly. Um, the butterfly, by the way, is a small copper. Um, it's the first time I've ever seen one this year, so I decided to paint one. And here you have it, one old butterfly. Um, finished, moved into position, and again, a flower put over the top of the back end of it to make it look as if it's in the painting. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed seeing how to make a butterfly and flower painting easy. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching it. Um, if you did, please subscribe. There'll be another one along shortly. Thank you very much for watching.